and welcome back to She Walks She Paints. This is the third and final adventure from Sky. Uh, we've come to a place called Glen Brittle. It's pretty early in the morning. I've got my hat back on because it's pretty chilly right now, but I think we're gonna have another good day. So fingers crossed, we're going to be doing a walk to visit the fairy pools. And today's got a little bit of a theme along that line. I've said before that Scotland is a really magical place to be. And I think Sky is one of those places where you can really feel it. Such an incredible landscape and there's so many beautiful things here that it's no wonder that this place is named after fairies. So we'll head out, do this walk, see what we can find, and then maybe we'll have time to go on somewhere else. Come on, pups, this way, this way, this way. Good boy. The fairy pools are a series of naturally formed pools and waterfalls with icy, crystal clear water that runs off the mountains above. The water is so clear and the colours of the rock are reflected back, creating this incredible blue colour. Even on a cloudy day, the pools are a deep aquamarine, but when the sun hits the water, it's dazzling. It's easy to understand why they are called the fairy pools. The colour of the water seems almost otherworldly, and the falls are so picturesque that it feels like you've walked onto the set of a fantasy film. Legend has it that a past chieftain of the local clan MacLeod married a fairy princess, which is why there are many fairy place names on the Isle of Skye. 
It is also said that the fairy pools attracted selkies, mythological creatures disguised as seals. They would come to the glen and change into human form for the night to bathe in the pools under the light of a full moon. The rocks of the surrounding mountains are magnetic, causing compasses to malfunction. Maybe this has also contributed to the area's magical reputation.
Thank you. From this point the river started getting smaller and there weren't as many pools so we decided we had come far enough for the day. This is known as the Black Coolin Ridge of Skye due to the darkness of the rocks forming the mountains. They are certainly living up to their name today, looming over the glen and making us feel very small. There were no mountains for us this time, but my partner Willie and I, accompanied by Jack Spaniels of course, have climbed this peak called Bruach na Frie. I remember walking down that ridge and looking down on the fairy pools glinting in the sunlight below us. There you have it, we're finished with fairy pools, heading back down now. It was such a lovely walk and I think Jack enjoyed it a lot. So just a really nice walk. The pools were absolutely stunning, like that colour was amazing, absolutely beautiful. We've got one more place to go, um, which I hinted at earlier. So we'll head across and we'll see you there. this is a little bit special we're going to somewhere called the fairy glen and it's just a really interesting little landscape very different to the other ones that we've seen on sky and i think you'll understand why it's got its name when we get there so let's head out see what we can find and i hope you enjoy it
hill is known as Castle Ewan because it resembles a ruined fortification, despite being a natural rock formation. Why it has this particular name is unknown, although it may derive from a Pictish name meaning Born of the Mountain. to the top? Yeah. Let's go. The landscape here was formed during the same tumultuous landslides as the Old Man of Store and the Karain, although here it is on a miniature scale. There are no particular fairy stories associated with the glen, but the whimsical, otherworldly landscape has given rise to the name, as it feels like a place that magical creatures would live. While the landscape here is natural, this spiral is probably a man-made addition to celebrate or accentuate the mystical appeal of the glen. In recent years, visitors have started to move rocks to create more spirals on the ground. However, this practice is discouraged to help keep the area in its natural state. So that's it, it's the next day and we've just got home. It was so nice to get away from home for a bit and spend a few days exploring Skye, it's such a beautiful place. Now that the weather's getting a bit nicer and the days are getting a bit longer, we can hopefully do more trips that are further afield so I can show you a lot more of Scotland as the year progresses, which is very exciting. I'm very excited to get going on that Highland cow from the last video. So let's see how I get on, I will see you in the studio. <laughs>
As always, I like to start by blocking in the lightest colour. This lets me see the image start to take shape and takes away the white page. I will build on this in layers, getting darker and darker as the painting progresses. I tend to find painting fur or hair a real challenge. I think because it's so loose and flowing. I prefer leaves or feathers as they usually follow a more structured pattern. I'd been putting off doing the darker shading here for a while, as there was a lot of space to fill and I was worried it wouldn't look right, but when I went for it, I actually really enjoyed painting this section. When painting animals, I find that they never really come to life until I've done the eye. It's so hard to see where the eye is on a highland cow, as their fringes are so long, but I think I captured it. This is one of those paintings where you just need to know when to say stop, I'm finished. You could keep going and going, adding more shadows and texture, but you can end up taking it too far and losing the qualities that you like about it. All of my paintings are available as fine art prints on my Etsy store. The sky paintings are available as individual prints or as a set of three for a lower price than buying them all separately. The income I get from selling prints really does help me to continue doing what I love and sharing that with you. If you wish to support me by buying a print, the link to my Etsy store is in the video description below. 
Thank you so much for joining me on this trip. I really hope you enjoyed our adventures and the paintings that I am yet to do, but you will have already seen. If you don't already, please do hit the subscribe button. It really helps my channel. And if you can leave me a like or a comment, let me know what you like best about the trip or which painting you like best. That would be great. I look forward to hearing from you and I will see you next time. Jack, get your bike with me.